Robin Hood Radio presents Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willems. Michelle is a longtime journalist and herself is a published playwright of several theatrical works. She's a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post, Daily Beast, and the Atlantic websites. Another hope and all, another show. Well, the numbers on theater attendance and dollars keep coming, and they are confusing to say the least. Well, the good news, so to speak, is August Wilson's revival of the piano lesson is being extended through the end of January. The same from Mike Birbiglia's one-man piece at Lincoln Center. Though Gabriel Byrne's solo show, Walking with Ghosts, is closing early. Well, good news, bad news. Now, speaking of that genre, Sandra, written by the prolific David Kale, has just opened at the Vineyard off-Broadway. The British playwright has penned more than a dozen one-person shows. He told me the secret is, well, having a dazzling performer. Here he has Marjan Nishat, highly respected and versatile, who can hold an audience's attention for some 80 to 90 minutes. Sandra is the tale of a woman searching for a missing person, a friend, and I believe finds more meaning in her life. I'm currently in Los Angeles, so missing this one in person. Again, that's Sandra. It's at the Off-Broadway Vineyard Theater. A truly dazzling performer named Jody Comer is officially set to arrive on Broadway in the spring. Comer is known for playing the charismatic assassin on Killing Eve, and she stars in the one-woman play Prima Facia. I think that's how you pronounce it. This was a smash in London with the actress playing a lawyer who discovers the limitations of the law after being sexually assaulted. This will be Jody Comer's Broadway debut. Also coming next spring, albeit not solo on stage, is a very starry name, Jessica Chastain, who won this year's Academy Award, of course, for Best Actress. She will star in yet another revival of Ibsen's A Doll's House. Chastain, a Juilliard grad, last starred on Broadway in a 2012 revival of The Heiress. Billed as a radical new production, this Doll's House will feature a script revised by the playwright Amy Herzog, who wrote off-Broadway plays like 4,000 Miles, Belleville, and Mary Jane. It will be directed by Jamie Lloyd, a British director whose recent Cyrano de Bergerac at BAM earlier this year won critical acclaim. So lots of important female names will grace New York stages in 2023. We also have Laura Linney and Zoe Wanamaker to look forward to. As for what's up now, as I always say, it's a good time to grab affordable seats to shows like Leopoldstadt, Death of a Salesman, A Strange Loop, Into the Woods, even Music Man. These are all shows that are set to close. The toughest ticket in town remains straight line crazy at The Shed. That one stars Ray Fiennes as Robert Moses. Folks are keeping an eye on whether it could transfer to Broadway. I'd say it's unlikely for several reasons. But you can go to National Theater Live and buy a ticket to see the show at a movie theater. That's important. I'm doing that for the Metropolitan Opera's The Hours, starring Renee Fleming and Kelly O'Hara. That one is based on the Virginia Woolf book. Overall, theater is alive and well and traveling. National shows are up and about, certainly here in Los Angeles. Richard Thomas is starring in Aaron Sorkin's version of To Kill a Mockingbird. And I had the nostalgic privilege of chatting with Mary Badham. Now, she was the original scout in the movie, and dare I say, my first childhood idol. And now she is playing a nosy and racist neighbor of Atticus and his clan. We had a long, enjoyable talk. She said being cast in the movie as scout was something she'd never considered. I was just a normal kid in Birmingham. We just went along for the ride, she said, after her mother took her to meet a casting person visiting from New York. Then she flew there for a screen test, and then to Hollywood, where Gregory Peck was meeting her at an airport, and the rest is history. Peck won the Oscar that year. Mary Badham was nominated at the age of 10, the youngest at the time ever. But in fact, the rest is not only past history, as here she is working on Mockingbird again. And once again, says this was a complete surprise. I'd never done theater, she told me, and I thought they were kidding at first when I was approached. But she did a table read in New York, and everyone was happy. She told me, more than anything, this experience has given me a real appreciation of live theater and how hard everyone works 
In a film, you do one scene here, another there. On stage, it's a different experience every night, depending on the audience. They laugh, they gasp at different times. I've loved watching how the actors respond, and the crews are so amazing. Well, does she wish she'd done theater throughout her life? She's now close to 70, living on a farm in Virginia with her husband of some 50 years, children and grandchildren. No, she said everything has turned out as it should. Somehow it seems I was supposed to be part of this story, the book, the film, and now the play. She has strong feelings about the fact that Harper Lee's book classic is being banned in some areas and feels it's more relevant than ever. Anyway, I had my thrill of the week. I told Mary Badham I'd written her a fan letter fan letter all those years ago, decades ago, and she was happy to hear that she had written back. But damn, I did not save it. Anyway, after all these years, Jill, I finally got to meet this particular childhood heroine. Isn't that nice when that happens? It really is. It makes you, well, first of all, it makes you feel old. Uh, oh. It makes you look back over your whole life. I mean, I, I remember going to school dressed as Scout. It was, it was come as you wish you were day, and I dressed as Scout. Right. No, I, th- I, 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 I wouldn't have gone like the old. I, I would have thought, oh, how cool. You know, just this is someone I've always wanted to, uh, yeah, to uh, meet and interact with, and just how how awesome that uh, that somehow the universe quirked in such a way. You know, it clinked, it chinked, whatever that uh, uh-huh. it, That's uh, right. it made it happen. Heard, yeah, when I heard what was going on in L.A., I said, you know what? And I knew she was in, and I thought, I'm going to try to see if I can make contact with Mary Badham and do an interview. And they did set it up. And uh, I also spoke to the woman who cast her 50 years ago. She, her name is Bodie Boatwright. She's a very famous. I know kid. that name. Now, you and who, know that name. Right, and who wouldn't know that name? I mean, because what, what's, her, what's her real name, by the way? I don't know. It's her given name, I'm sure, was not Bodie. Yeah. Bodie, they call her. She's of 90 course, Bodie years Bo- old. Right. But that's and, a- I spoke, yeah. and I spoke to her. Uh, first of all, I said to Mary Badham, so I'm going to throw out a name to you, Bodie Boatwright. She said she mm. made everything happen. And then I spoke with Bodie, who said I saw a thousand children casting for those three parts. A thousand children in the South. And she said, when Mary Badham walked in, I said, I found my scout. She said she looked like an Audrey Hepburn at seven or eight years old. So. It's kind of a great story, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's fantastic. It's also a reminder of um, how things actually worked, uh, ed, yeah. worked, worked, and uh, a, a, I think a good uh, template for how you, you know a lot of people. And this is no thanks to screens and. What were we talking about last week about those, uh, you know, send it, send, send in an edited tape from the bathroom and I'll cast you? Yes, yeah, no, yeah, not really. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Is to know why, I mean, yes, things evolve and can be improved over time, but one needs to know why it was done that way. You know, how can you figure out somebody, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, digressing, but what else is new? How, how how can you figure out how someone is going to behave live by watching them on a screen? That's right. How? It's just, That's it's right. not, it's like the, the, the mind, it doesn't, it doesn't, it does not compute. It, I mean, sure, you can be presentable, you can have presence. I mean, it used to work the other way when you think about it, how many theater people could not translate their ability to project to real live people onto a camera. That's right. And she said, Mary said that she thought it was a joke when they called her. It was obviously kind of a, you know, a clever ploy. What if we get the original scout? But they didn't know if she could really do it or if she'd be interested. And she didn't know. And they went to New York. She loved Aaron Sorkin. She said, this is a different, this is a different mockingbird. You know, this is not the movie, as we know, we, you know, I've seen the play, uh, and she's having a great time. She's traveling with it through, I think they go all the way through July from city to city, but yeah, it turned out she could do it, you know, and here she is being the nasty racist (laughs) and she said she's having fun doing it. So who knows? Anyway, I got to meet Mary Badham and I got to be scout or be with scout one more time. Uh, just a disappointment over Gabriel Byrne's show. 
closing. I heard that from a number of people. I think you'll remember that I kind of predicted that here, that I thought that was a long shot. You know, when you're going to do a one-person show, as I've written about a lot lately, you know, they're kind of better on smaller stages for a million reasons. And he did it in a big Broadway house. It's hard to fill a Broadway house for one person. I don't care who you are. Um, and, you know, maybe that should have been done somewhere like the Vineyard, but he's too big a name for that. But um, so there's been some disappointment and I think a little maybe embarrassment over that one. Um, and- no, otherwise people are looking to the spring. The next big one to open is Some Like It Hot. I may be able to review that next week. Let's see, because I did get to uh, get to see that, but it hasn't officially opened yet, so I'm not allowed to talk about it. But I think that's the last big one of 2022, if I'm not mistaken. And then, then we then they all start closing in January and opening in February and March. Which it must be um, mentioned, just as a reminder, reminder. This is what happens. This is this is the uh, this is yeah. the cycle as as it is known to be. Um, was there some reason that uh, the Gabriel Byrne show did not go? Was not off Broadway. I mean, was it was it an attempt to? I think that he's a big enough name. You know, they figured. You know, he's been on Broadway a number of times. Long Day's Journey and Tonight. He's a well-known actor. It was based on a beautiful book he wrote. But I don't know. Uh, I enjoyed it, and I said I enjoyed it. But I just, but I could see a lot of empty seats, and uh, I don't know. It wasn't. You know, it was sort of like fourth on everybody's list everybody I talked to said oh yeah I want to see Leopold stuff then I want to see piano lesson then I want to see this oh yeah and what about Gabriel Br-? you know and if you're fourth on everybody's list they're not making money you know that's the bottom line and the producers have to pull the plug at some point they that's you know that's a lot of money wasted I'm glad about piano lesson and that one didn't surprise me because first of all it was a very diverse audience it's got good cast it's a beautiful production. I mean, who knows? Who knows what's going to make it? But like I said, one-person shows, they're risky. They're lonely. The one at the Lincoln Center is doing well. But that, too, is a smaller house. You know, it's Lincoln Center. It's it's not a full Broadway house. Mike Birbiglia really does have a reputation. He's done movies. Well, so is Gabriel Byrne. I don't know. I don't know. There's no, There's no right or wrong, but... We're not going to lose one person shows. They're going to keep doing them, but I think they're better done small. All right. I have one other thing to say to you. Quoting from Variety, or Varietti, as a friend used to say. Yeah. Over the course of her legendary career, Alice Lee Boaty Boatwright has cast iconic movies, served as a studio exec, and repped starry talent, including Joan Didion, Paul Newman, and Joanne Woodward. Yeah, very good. Big friend of Sue Menger's also. She's a big friend of, well, uh, Alan Pakula, the producer, is the one who brought her to the She is Southern. The rest and, of, I, I will say, I will go on to say that the rest of the talks about how she would, how she grabbed him and said, I've got to find you your scout. So. That's right. She really felt strongly. She is a Southern woman. And she saw literally a thousand people. She also cast the boy, Philip Alford. And even Mary Badham didn't know what had happened to Philip Alford. The other boy, the little boy next door, who was based on Truman Capote, you'll remember, he passed away, that actor who played Dill, the summer neighbor. Uh, anyway, ask me anything, because I remember every... I told her, I said, hey, you, you delivered the two most, arguably the two most famous lines in movie history. Hey, boo. And you know who played boo was Robert Duvall. So that's, that's history, too. Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willens, produced in the studios of Robin Hood Radio, robinhoodradio.com.